Let's pray that God will bless, meet us today in a wonderful way. He's a good God and is worthy to be praised. Amen. Bless the Lord with me. <laughs> Let's uh, thank the Lord for our, our praise team. They are, yeah. amen. Sister Kalada, you showing out. Uh, <laughs> Y'all hear those keys this morning? There's some hidden keys or something you touching. I don't know what it is, but yeah, got a, something got a hold of you there, Brother Cornelius, yeah. Amen. It's a dynamic duo over there. And Brother Frank, I mean, it's, it's a blessing. So anyway, let me read the scripture. Hebrews chapter 10, verses uh, 1 through 7. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 7. For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, for the worshipers once purified would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every day. For it is not possible every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could not, could take away sins. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God. This is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 7. 
May God add a blessing to hear, reader, and doer of his holy word. And let's uh, remain standing for this dynamic praise team and musicians here. <laughs> Join us in singing every praise. Well, this morning we are blessed to have Elder Michael here. He's going to bring the word today. Let's pray for him. We're always delighted to have his uh, father in the house, Elder Herring. And uh, Brother Herring, you just lift your hand. We praise the Lord. You know, he was a uh, pastor for many years at um, our sister church in Long Beach, California, and New Hope. Thank you. New Hope for many, many, many years. We Praise God for his ministry across this diocese and to this convention. But this morning, his son, who the mantle has fallen on, his son, Elder Mike Herring, is going to come today and bring us a word from God. So let's receive him now by saying, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Bishop. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And we... We rejoice in being glad in it. Amen. I love to worship the Lord. Amen. Uh, and we're going to, I think we have one more song that's going to help us to the worship. And whenever Mark plays that song, we can, amen. Amen. We want to worship the Lord as we just prepare our hearts to receive from him. Amen. Our life is a, is a sacrifice to, to the Lord. We're supposed to bring, present our bodies, a living sacrifice. Amen. Holy and acceptable to him. So how many wants to get closer to the Lord? Amen. That's why we, we want to get closer to the Lord. So this song is simply just saying, we know it is, draw me near. Amen. Draw me near. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at my dad. He's, he's right here in front. Amen. So he, he, his, his standard is high. So when I see him, I have to look to the Lord. Amen. <laughs> draw me near. I don't know if it's going to be queued up, but if not, we'll, we can get into the word. Amen. Amen. Little technical difficulty, amen. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. As he uh, fi- uh, finds that, go to Hebrews. Go to Hebrews chapter number 8. Chapter 8. Amen. Amen. You there? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good, and he is greatly to be praised. I'm missing my better half today, so y'all pray with me and pray for me. Amen. We shared with you that uh, the trial that we are going through now, amen, is the testing of our faith. and reading this, I preach this at the house and in my car and doing different things. And Lord, is this what you want me to say? And uh, but he want us to get to the point. Amen. And what what's the point? And your your life is a worship to God. Amen. Your life is a wish, worship to God. We come to a church building and we call it worship service, but our lives is a worship to God. Every day, every day, we, our lives are to be presented to God as a worship to him. Amen. We idolize him, if you would. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let me read real quick, and, uh, and then we're going to get into the word. Y'all pray for me. I just, uh, when I say pray for me, I really mean it, you all. Uh, just, I need, I was rushing it. I had to go in there and ask the Lord to forgive me if I offended anybody for my driving today. Because, because I, was, I was getting here, amen, and, and it was raining in some places, and then it was dry in others, and I tried to make up time when it was dry, and, uh, and me and a blue truck, we, we, we came on into L.A. I was, I'm going to stay with him, but he got to going too fast. I said, okay, I even got to let you go because it's too wet to be driving that fast, but uh, uh, God blessed me to make it here, and I want to say thank you to him. Amen. And I'm going to say thank you to him. He allowed us to make it here safely. Amen. I don't know what version you have, but when I read that version, y- y'all, can we just have, we're going we're gonna to get this, the point of this. Uh, when I read this version, I said, that's the word the Lord gave me. What's the point? What's the point when I read that version? But when I read the King James Version 8 and 1, it said, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. 
That's King James language. This is the psalm. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Amen. There's another uh, a passage of scripture that talks about true holiness. Y'all remember that scripture that says in true holiness. Amen. And it's almost like how can you have a fake holiness? but true holiness. But when you look at the true holiness, it's the intent of the tabernacle. Okay? A true tabernacle. This is why God gave Moses the pattern to build the tabernacle because there's a point behind it. Amen. Amen. Y'all follow me, please, and, and, and pray with me, okay? If we skip to verse 5... Uh, uh, in the same chapter, it says, who served unto the example shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, for, say, for see, saith he, this is God talking to him, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Amen. We got something better, a a amen, than what Moses and them had. Amen. But what they had was a shadow. It wasn't the true tabernacle, but it was real. A amen. Amen. Y'all follow me today. I I it's just... What's the point in everything God was doing? There is a point behind it. Amen. And, and my, my quest today, if I don't get it out through my rambling, this is what I really need you to understand is that there's a point behind God's story. Hey, there's a point behind it. I may not get it over to you today. Hopefully, I get it over to you today. I'm not going to speak negative. I'm going to stay positive that you always will receive what Mike is trying to say by the help of the Holy Ghost because I believe God has assigned me today to share with you, don't miss the point. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't miss the point. Stay with me. That, and look, I, I, I love to tell stories. My wife is not here but she could nod her head to that and say, I love to tell stories. My dad loved to tell stories, especially when we preach them. We, 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 cause we, because we want you to understand <laughs> what we're saying. Amen. A amen. And, and sometimes if you're telling a story and you get off track and you forget your thought on why you were saying this story, amen. that's one of the most embarrassing times of ministry is when you forget the point. And then you have to admit, I forgot where I was going with that, but, but such and such. But I don't want to miss the point today. God stayed empty. Sometimes you will repeat a story, but you're trying to emphasize a point. You're trying to emphasize a point. Uh, 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 and I don't want us to miss the point today. And then so, preacher, what is, what is your point? They, 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 they taught folks and they told us, I went to a seminar in Jackson, they said you got to have points when you're preaching. And, and some have three points. And, and I remember Dr. Jerry Young once was at the uh, seminar and he said they teased him because he had three points. And the New Hope Church when he was pastoring had notepads and he wasn't hooping no more. He was just giving points. And so they asked him, when you going to hoop? Between what point are you going to hoop? And he said, they waiting on the points. <laughs> and he said, some of y'all that I come to hear, he said, y'all have no point. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But, <laughs> but, but, but I, I want you to add, this is going to stay with you today in the rain. We, we, what was the point of the service and the sermon today is, I'm going to get right to it, is Jesus. Every, everything, I like, I like what he, he said, good point. That's a good point. Jesus is the good point. I heard on Bible study at the end, Elder Bertrand said, Jesus is the benediction. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Jesus is the benediction. Now, we can discuss the other things that you all were discussing. I don't want to get involved in that. But Jesus is the benediction. 
Jesus is all God is talking about. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1 starts off, God who in sundry times and in divers matters. Somebody praying for me because I feel God, God who in sundry times and in divers matters, he spoke unto us by the prophets. Amen. That's King James. Different ways, different times, different ways he spoke to us by the prophets. He said, but in these last days, he's spoken unto us by his son. I was contemplating, Lord, how I know he wanted me to get to the point of it because we missing stuff by missing God's point. Thank you, Lord. What God said is consistent to what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Amen. That, that's, that's a Facebook post. What, what, what God said is consistent to what he's saying. Amen? I'm, I'm going to mess with you today because y'all deep in here. I feel deepness in here. Y'all spiritually mature in here, so I can't be playing. It's, 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 it's uh, uh, God told Abraham, God said, God told Abraham to sacrifice or offer up his son. He didn't say, he said, offer up. Isaac to me, the one that was prayed in, the miracle child. I, I now want you to offer him up to me. Amen. That's a hard task right there. <laughs> Amen. And, 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 and Abraham loaded up Isaac, wood, everything, and went up the mountain to offer up Isaac because he believed God. He believed, this is what he believed. He believed that God promised him he would be a father of many nations. Amen. Through, the, through Sarah and him, that's how it's going to happen. So he believed God so much, he said, maybe God going to raise him up, but I got to offer him. Amen. I got to do it. I got to offer him. I got I to offer him up. And he was taking him to offer him up. And he put him on the altar. Praise the Lord. His son, being of age, he wasn't tied up a little baby. They had that in the little Sunday school book. He, he, he was a baby. He, he was a young man. He knew what was going on because he, he saw this ritual before. He said, Father, I see everything but the sacrifice. Daddy, you missing something. And he said, God is going to provide himself. <laughs> Amen. It's you. <laughs> hey, amen. He, he got up to be sacrificed and pulled his heart, uh, knife out to kill him, and God said again, Abraham, Abraham, he said, stay your hand, now, now I know, I, I provided something for you, don't do it, I, amen, there, there you go, that's a good place to give God some praise, I, I, I provided, I provided someone for you, amen, praise I saw all of us on the altar about to get, about to get killed and, and sacrificed them, because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission, but I see Jesus, Send the, hey, hey, stay your hand, Father. Don't, don't kill him. I, I got this. I got this for him. That was a quick little nitbit for me. I, amen. He, he substituted for us. But God said at the bottom of the mountain, offer him up. But then at the top of the mountain, God said, stay your hand. Hey, amen. And I pray, I'm like, but God, what you said down there, was different than what happened. He said, no, I, I said it, but I'm telling you a story. And don't miss the point. See, I think if we, if we stay focused on the stories that God gave, we'll miss the point, which is Jesus. We'll miss his provision, and we'll do things in the name of God. We'll say what God said. Amen. God said, offer him up. And that's what we're going to do. Amen. And that was serious right there. That, that was real serious right there. That wasn't should we have church on Sunday or Saturday. Y'all hear what I'm saying? <laughs> that, 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 don't, don't confuse what he said and, and think what he said is different from what he's saying. God, listen, here it is. Here it is. Another thing I want to say. There's another point mixed up in here. God is eternal. God is eternal. Amen. Somebody repeat that. God is eternal. 
He's an infinite. He's the all-wise God. Why are you saying that? Because God, and in my meditation this week, I said, God, which one is harder for you to deal with us or for you to deal with you? Because you are coming from an eternal perspective, and we are limited to time. We have to wait until something happens, and you are already there. And when, and, and when we say eternity, it doesn't mean that it starts, Brother Daniel, after time stops. Eternity is already going. And I'm trying to, Bishop, I'm trying to wrap that concept around my little, well, I got a big head, but around my thoughts and my, my head. Time started within eternity. In the beginning, God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So God was already going. So, so now if he has to talk with us, Brother Kurt, if he has to talk with us, He's talking with us from an eternal perspective. So when he said he was wounded for our transgression to us, that's already done, but it never happened yet. When Isaiah penned it, it never happened. But to communicate with God, you have to walk in God's spirit. Because the natural man can't receive the things of God. Their foolishness unto him because when he says in Revelation, right? For these things are done. He's true and faithful that said it. Praise the Lord. And there's no way that he gets inconsistent to what he said. I'm trying to say something now. And I think we have to preach what he's saying, but stay consistent to what he said. Praise the Lord. I shouted when I got that earlier this week. I was like, oh, Lord, that's what a task. So preaching is not, to me, something I study and go learn how to do. You have to be called by the eternal God to say what the eternal God wants to say to finite people. To people that were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. To people that are, have days are numbered. To people that are, are, are but dust and wrestling with time. Praise the Lord. So in order to communicate to you, I got to tell you stories. I got to talk to you. And I think the core essence, I'm trying to get through this. Is, I'm trying to get through this. The, the core essence of the church is to win the loss, is to reconcile. He's given us a word of reconciliation. And, and everything that we do, I, he's given some apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers, uh, 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 evangelists, all why? For the perfecting of the church, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. There's a point behind why everybody has the office they have. Hey, hey, Amen. <laughs> I want us to really, he tells us stories to try to get this over. Now, I put all these things in place. If you read Hebrews 1 up to, to uh, I said chapter, up to 7, you're going to be blown away with the authority that the high priest is given. And why you have to go to the high priest for all these things. It was so eloquently and divinely put together. If you got caught up in it, you're going to miss Jesus. Something that was designed to glorify God. Paul said in Romans chapter 7, it wasn't the law. The law was good, just, and holy. He said the problem was with me. Amen. And listen, you all, the law was never designed to save us. But that was the desire of God. Am I yelling too loud? Y'all need me just to talk to you. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean God, God wants the world reconciled back to him. Amen. I mean, that's his whole point. I want you back with me, and, but I have to work with you to reveal my son to you to get you back to me. Amen. So I'm going to get a people that nobody even know about. That's Ezekiel described and they was drowning in their own blood and nobody looked at it. They went down to Egypt, 75 people, but came out a nation. You know it was not by might nor by power, but it was by my spirit, saith the Lord. Praise the Lord. I didn't want, they had no king. They looked different from everybody else. Praise the Lord. Amen. Balak and Balaam, they said they shouting down there like a king is among them, but they didn't have no king. That's a funny group. That's a strange group. Praise the Lord. Forty years, their feet didn't swell. Shoes didn't tear up. 
Amen. But if they get bit, they don't have to go to Kaiser. They just look and live. And God saved them from snake bites. And got thirsty, hit a dry thing, hit a rock, and water came out. Somewhere in the text it said there were palm trees in the wilderness. You know, a wilderness is a dry and uncultivated place. Nothing's supposed to grow there. But the Bible said they had palm trees. Praise the Lord. Beautiful water springs. Praise the Lord. Meat coming down from heaven. Somebody said they did. They ate angels food. Praise the Lord. Was there ever people like this people? Praise the Lord. Did ever people go through some stuff that they went through just following this invisible God? Praise the Lord. And they out there and God said, I got to communicate to them. Amen. God wants so much to be with us. He wants so much to be with us. And Moses was Moses was really was pushing at it. After he walked with God for a while, Brother Daniel, he said, Lord, I've done all this for you. I know you real. I've heard your voice. I've seen you've given me a pattern to put this tabernacle together. You've done all. He said, but Lord, just show me your glory. Show me your glory. I, amen. I'm not going to say what's the point of all this. He said, but just show me your glory. I, I've been hearing you. And I, I saw the Red Sea open up, and I didn't know how I was going to do it. You have to tell me to go back and stretch it. I, you've just been doing some amazing things. But all this time I've been with you, the only thing I haven't seen was your glory. Let me, let me see you. Let me see you. And God is like, boy, you know I want to show you that. <laughs> I wish y'all could be in that text with me. He's like, I, wish, I, wish, I, I want to show He said, but you know a man can't look at me and live. Praise Lord. See, God knows he's bad. <laughs> and I'm saying bad meaning good like the 90 days. God knows he's holy. God, God knows he's all that in a bag of whatever you eat. God God, God knows he's good. He said, since I couldn't swear by none greater, he said, I swear by myself. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. God can't get lifted up in pride. Praise the Lord. Amen. He sit, the, 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 the clouds are his footprints. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> oh, Lord, I wish I could glorify God with me right now. I feel like, whoo, hallelujah, hallelujah. We, we have this great, my brother say, this great big old God. And we walking around here like we ain't got nothing. Y'all too humble for me on that. I see. But sometimes you got to put your chest out and say, man, Jehovah God is on our side. And he is more than all. And if we in his saddle, no evil can befall. The God who conquers Gideon's host and Pharaoh's army drowned, testify, will never let his saints be lost. No evil reigns around. Praise the Lord. Amen. No weapon formed against us. Praise the Lord. We're scared as we can be, but with no weapon. Praise the Lord. And God is, I'm trying to be, God is trying to communicate something to us. He said, the way I talk to you, I'm going to use, Paul said, he used the visible things to communicate to us the invisible. So I got to connect with them. Praise the Lord. Amen. He wants to be with us, but he knows he can't. So when Moses asked for that, God said, go in the cleft of the rock over there. Because he wanted to do it so bad. Praise the Lord. And Moses was doing something, and God came by, and he said, Moses, look real quick. Because God, I want y'all to see that God is real, and he wants to be, but he can't go beyond his laws. He can't violate himself because he got to be true to what he said. Whew. He can't compromise what he said. Let me, let me, let me. And so when he went by, he went by and Moses just glimpsed and saw the hinder part of God. Praise the Lord. Just a touch. He just, and almost blinded him. He, he, he came down now with what God wanted us to do, the Ten Commandments and the and the people couldn't look at his face for the glory that was on his face. And Moses had to put a veil over his face to talk to his people, just seeing a touch of God. Because the glory of God is Jesus. How do you know that, preacher? Because Hebrews said he's the brightness of his glory, the very express image of his person. So when God and Jesus told Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father also. 
Praise the Lord. Somehow those three are one. I, I'm not going to get into no theology on that, but he said they won. Praise the Lord. They are one. They are one. The only way I can say it is the body, soul, and spirit. They are one. They are one. Now, looking at the text, and I'm in there. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to, get to the point. I am. I hope y'all there. I hope y'all already got it. It's Jesus, because I told you. Uh, the story is not meant. Somebody tell a story. The story is not meant to replace the substance or the point of the message. Okay, when, when somebody's telling a story. And when I'm telling a story, it, it, it's very frustrating because I'm one that don't like to be misunderstood or misrepresented. I don't know if you all are like that, but that's me. Don't go tell somebody what you thought I said. If, if you don't have it right, don't talk for me. Right? No, don't misunderstand. Don't, 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 don't misunderstand me. And, and so I think, uh, I think to justify my long-winded preaching back in the day, I'm trying to watch myself now, is because I definitely didn't want the congregation to misunderstand or miss the point of what I was saying. So I'll go over it again, and the ones that got it just say, go on, I got you, preacher, go ahead. So don't replace it, because if you're telling giving an example of something to try to make your message clear, and then somebody run off with the story, you're like, no, you're missing what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. All the married couples said amen. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, God's word is out. God's word is out. And he is consistent with what he said. All right? When he says something, he's going to do it. And we can depend on it. The warning is that we can take the symbols of faith in Christ or God and replace God with that. This is, my warning. This is what came in. Don't, don't replace the symbol of God. In Isaiah chapter 44, I'm, I got about 10 more. In Isaiah chapter 44, he was mocking those that created gods or idol worship. You get this uh, craftsman, skilled craftsman that I made. <laughs> he makes something out of wood and carve out a picture. And use the wood and bow down and worship the thing he just made. And then he'll take the wood and burn a fire. This is in Isaiah 54. And burn a fire and burn bread and make bread with it. And that bread becomes sacred because it was made out of that wood. So he used wood and he used bread. And those two idols became idolatry. Praise the Lord. And it was interesting to me. I'm taking my time, but I feel like preaching. Right? It, it's, it was interesting to me that in the Christian dome, we have taken bread and we have taken wood. The wood being the cross. And the bread, oh, communion, don't touch this table. <laughs> oh, Ray, I'm just, now look, I'm not going to make light of communion. I'm not doing that. Don't miss my point. Praise the Lord. But it was never intended for the, see, look, the cross, the wood, two thieves hung on a cross. But the only thing gave our cross a meaning was who was on that cross. Praise the Lord. And see, if we're not careful in our religiousness, if that's such a word, if we're not we'll take Jesus off the cross, put the cross around our necks, and worship the wood. Even in TV land, Dracula is considered evil. When Dracula comes, what do they do? They grab a cross. Praise the Lord. Yes, they do. 
We, we laugh at that. Yes, we do, because that's, man, what that cross ain't going to do nothing. But, oh, don't touch what we think is holy. Oh, oh, this is challenging. I know it is. This is challenging us. It's challenging our thoughts. I, I, I looked at, I told the church when I was pastoring in, 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 in Redlands, I, I said, uh, I said, uh, uh, I asked the question and I looked up some things. Why do they have the uh, white sheet over the communion? Why is it white? And I, my dad is here. He know, I, I was a scary little boy. I was bad, so I was scary. That's what my mother told me. That's why she's so scared because you're bad during the day and you're scared at night. And I couldn't stand funerals. Funerals, I ain't trying to go to nobody's funeral. That man, I'm sitting there scared and quiet. And when the deacons, y'all, Y'all would get that big old communion table, put a sheet over it, playing soft music. There is a child singing it real. And I'm just, oh, I'm hearing all this. And then y'all roll that big thing out. To me, somebody dead under there. And so when I got older, I was like, what does the sheet, what the, the Lord do we really, the ladies in white, the men in black, it's just, oh God, do we really? What's the point of all of that when it's so emphasized that don't this lady come in this church and don't have no white dress on? You with a man with black suit, you gotta have all of this. And I'm not getting on if that's tradition, stay to it. Yes, keep going. Don't miss my point. The point is if we lose whose body that is, that means if you don't like the sister next to you, and both of y'all in white. Y'all missed the point. With your big hat on and your white dress with white stockings, y'all missed the point. And I asked, I asked, I, I looked it up. You know, you can Google anything. So I Googled it. And I'm looking, I said, what is the point? That's how late this was. I'm still dealing with this. Y'all pray for preacher's children or, ch or, or church children as a whole. Just, but I looked, I said, why is this? And, and they said, this is what was said. They said the reason why the white sheet or sheet is covering the communion uh, symbols is because in the day, back in the day, in slavery days or in the early days of the church, they would have these things outside because that's where we would meet or in a the, in the, in the barn or wherever. And, 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 and all the stuff, flies would be flying around. So instead of fanning, they said, we're going to cover it. <laughs> Had no theological depth at all. It was just a hygiene thing. We, we, we don't want that. And, and they, I said, is that all? <laughs> and I'm glad the members of Redlands Church, they said, we ain't no longer putting no sheets over that. Because pastor got a problem with it, he's scary, or we know the real reasons why. Anyway, the point is, don't miss the point of communion. But what, what's the point in all this religious stuff? What's the point of coming? What's the point of why we're here today? Know the point. Or you'll be religiously doing some things. Now, it's good to come to the we, we got scripture on that. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. I don't want to sound like I'm fussing this morning, but this is just on my heart that we missing the point. Don't miss the point. And I, I, I said, look at this. I'm, I'm trying to close because he, this, the thrust of the church is evangelism. Yeah, to go win the loss. To go win the loss. And, and I'm afraid, and when we think of Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter 15 with the prodigal son, oh, that's the theme of Luke chapter 15. We all, tell, when we say prodigal son, that means that's the bad boy. Right away. Can the church say amen? amen? Am I making that up? Am I, no, I'm not stretching that. That's, when we say prodigal son, automatically we have been trained that that's what the text is talking about. It's talking about that bad boy. And prodigal boys that are out there, a lot of them know that story. And they won't come back in here because they know they in there getting beat up because they looked at as the prodigal boy. And because we missed the point, Lord have mercy, of Jesus' parable, now the one who he died for have big walls and can't come back to the place the father is waiting for. 
because we've shared a message of the parable and be, we talk about that boy so bad and we have sermons about him. He was in the hog pen and the organ, yeah, he was in the, and, and we go on and on. He was about to eat the dust, yeah, Lord. We, oh, dang, I got any prodigals in here. You think they're going to raise their hand? <laughs> you just beat him up and made him feel so terrible so, and because you missed the point. Why you didn't talk about the coin that way? Why you didn't talk about the sheep that way? You just kind of throw the sheep out just a little bit. And then the coin, you never talk about the coin. But the whole thought behind Jesus' lecture and parable was trying to communicate to you the heart of his father. And in every instance, the father was waiting to rejoice. In every instance, he was showing how the father was waiting to rejoice because what was lost is not found. Oh, if we would have shared that message like that, we had a whole lot of folks just running to the church saying, I know where I can go when nobody will judge me. But we have developed the spirit of the one who actually started the conversation. This man can be of God because he received his sin. He can't be that way because there's no way. So Jesus was taking that particular time to tell folks, since you don't know who God is, since you don't know how he really is, I do. Let me tell you a story to maybe help you understand really what your father is about. And in our religious judgmental noses, we forgot about what God was trying to communicate and start beating up the prodigal son. Brian even said, why? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now we got the bread. We can't eat the show bread. Hmm? They missing the point. Praise the Lord. Now we can't heal nobody on the Sabbath day because they missing the point. Praise the Lord. Now you can't do such and such on a certain day because they missing the point. And Jesus said, y'all are nothing but sepulchers. You got dead men's bones. I mean, he just came to the religious world hard. He said, and people are walking over you and they don't know it. He said, but I'm the light of the world. I'm coming to expose how you've taken what God has said and make it to be to your advantage. You wicked and adulterous generation. Uh, uh, repent. I believe, I mean, he came with fire with them. He said, how dare you take my father's house and make it into a den of thieves. My father's house is supposed to be a house of prayer. What's wrong? Get up out of here with that. You're missing the point. And because you missed the point, when the point walked up on you, you didn't know who he was. When the point walked up and got baptized, only those that had a heart for God will recognize Jesus. John the Baptist had to baptize in everybody. He looked and stopped and said, you ought to be baptizing me. John the Baptist didn't miss the point. He saw who he was, and he baptized him. Praise the Lord. Don't, don't miss the point. Don't miss the point. Jesus will go right by you, and you wouldn't even know it. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. He said, search the scriptures. He said, and then you, you, you think you got eternal. You looking in the scriptures. You read it every day. He said, but if you knew what those scriptures were saying, you know it's talking about me. They are those scriptures are testifying about me. And he said, Abraham rejoiced to see me in my day. Praise the Lord. Yes, he did. And that's the form of Melchizedek. Did you read all of it? He rejoiced to see me in my day. I'm out here, y'all. I hope y'all can read, read Hebrews 1 and it, you'll say, oh, that's what he was saying. He, he said, he rejoiced to see my day and paid tithe. Yes, he did. He was like, ah. Uh, now, don't, don't get to say, okay, the pastor preaching, I'm tired. No, I'm not. I'm preaching Jesus. Don't, don't miss the point. He is, he is connecting the dots. And Melchizedek, and he said, Abraham rejoiced to see me in my day. And you know what they said? I know something wrong with you now. You ain't over 50 years old. And you talking about Jesus. Man, get this man out of here with this craziness. And it's because they missed the point, oh, they read scripture. They read scripture after scripture. And they would read, the, here, here's their protocol of church. They would read 
from the prophetic, the prophets, and then they would read from the law. No expounding, just going through the motions. Long as they got a tabernacle, long as they got an ark that represented something, no, as long as they got a seat in there, everything got to be in order. And I look at it today, I mean, I, I don't, there's a point behind everything, and please don't get me wrong right here. Everybody, just keep doing what you're doing, but I looked at the, the, the Catholic funerals and all the things, the robes on, the big tall hats. There's a reason why you do all that, and I'm not here to talk about that. But I, what, uh, uh, Psalms 2 just came to mind. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain day? They, they doing vain stuff repetitiously, saying that we are God, and they missing the point why they do it. You, you have a communion, and you hate the brother and sister that's on the same road with you. You missing the point of the whole thing of communion. I hope I ain't, do I sound fussy? I don't want to sound fussy. I, I don't want to sound fussy, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to preach to you and, and stay calm right here because I knew this was a real good, a tentative place because it gets on our religion. It gets on our religious nerves because some of the things that we do and we see it ain't no, it, it ain't nothing to it. Uh, unless you mix it with faith. Unless you do it, now you can have a robe on and mix it with faith and you understand what's going on. It won't be offensive. Now you can do, now you can wear your white dress and do this, but it won't be offensive because you do it in the spirit of love and grace and you don't, you don't, you're not missing the point that's behind it. You took off makeup <laughs> to look holy. You took off lipstick, you don't braid your hair, you don't do none of that stuff. Long dress, whatever. But your heart is bad. Praise the Lord. Now you got two bad things. I said, first lady, I don't hope I don't want to offend the lady. But you know, you, you should at least just keep the makeup on. Don't let both go bad. I mean. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just got to make it plain. That's why you, you, I mean, you're trying to look holy and your heart is torn up. Hey, 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 man, my, my mother, so bless her heart, rest in peace. I love her. And I can say this, but y'all don't bother my mother. Let me bother my mama. But uh, <laughs> she told me when I first started preaching, she said, Mike, you don't walk like a preacher. Because, see, they used to, she used to say that I used to walk cool, you know. I had a cool stroll when I was. You know, I was a football player. I was a quarterback. I was basketball. So I had a cool, and I never did change much. I came to church, cool. You know, I'm just walking, glad I'm saved. But I was walking. Jason, though, my nephew, that was cool. And uh, she said, you got to change the way you walk. You got to walk like a preacher. I said, how a preacher walk? <laughs> and she, when I asked her, she started laughing because she said, I don't know. Just walk, boy. <laughs> just <laughs> When I asked her, she even laughed at herself, like, well, how am I supposed to walk? Do you want me to walk like this? I, I said, as long as I'm walking right, I ain't dipping and chewing and sucking and jiving. That's to me how I'm supposed to walk. Not. We can't major on minor things. And then we minor on the major things because we don't get in his word and let God reveal himself to us. And I'm, I'm, I'm closing, really. Uh, this is, this is kind of nice rain showering word for you. It's because we don't want to miss the point. If we want to be a church on fire for Jesus, and you, you got to really know who Jesus is. You can't go by what somebody told you. You got to have Jesus for yourself. And I'm glad it's that way. You, you can't just stumble into glory. There, there's a commitment you got to make. You just can't know God by reading his word and studying and getting it all up in your head. There's a relationship that he is forcing you to have. You, you, you got to know him. You got to know him. You can't know the things that are freely given. There are sometimes walking with God, you're going to have to say, I don't know. <laughs> there are some days you're going to have to search the scriptures, and, and that's what God wants. He loves for kings to look and search out a matter. He wants you to look, and on the way, he will bless you. On the way, he will bless you. Going that way, going that way, going that way. That, that was, that was a, something I was supposed to say before I close, and uh, uh, but we, we, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. But I, I know, I know that God wants to reveal himself to us through his son, Jesus. That's the only way he can communicate to us. And all the things, all the rituals, here it is, all the rituals and all the things that were blessed and sanctified 
led us to Christ. The law was not designed to save us. The law was designed to do exactly what it did. Bring us to Christ. Amen. And there is some significance now to me when he died, the temple, he went right to the temple, was rent from top to bottom. It was saying that's over. That's over. And I'm going to challenge your thinking. I'm going to challenge your thoughts. We're going to... Uh, uh, the pattern that Moses made, the pattern that Moses made in the wilderness was body, soul, and spirit. It was the outer court, the inner court, and the holies of holies. That was three elements that made up what he made. And God gave it to him by the spirit. I, I, another pattern that was given by the Spirit was David was given a, uh, uh, the pattern by the Spirit for Solomon to make the temple. All of that was to glorify Christ. And the measurement was so specific, the Bible said there wasn't a, a hammer of sound, nothing that on the foundation of the temple. Everything fitly joined together. Perfect pattern. Moses his pattern simulated the body. Outer court was the body. The inner court was the soul. The, the, the inner court was the soul. And the holies of holies was the spirit, the tabernacle, the presence of God. And only person that could dwell behind that, all right, I'm trying to get to this point. The only person that can dwell behind that was the high priest. And he had to go in once a year the way he was sanctified to go. Rope around him. He can, all those ritualist things. That was not the point. That was the story. That was God communicating something for 42 generations. And what I found to be interesting in Hebrews is that that represented body. Everybody could come to the outer court. The inner court, there's only a specific group in the holies of holies, nobody could go. The only place we couldn't operate was the holies of holies. And we were two-thirds of a human being because the only place we couldn't operate was in the spirit. We were still body, we were still soul. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. I didn't know it was going to go like this, but this is where we are right now. Until God came and made a way. So now when he tore that down, now he says, and you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. And what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending Jesus in the likeness of sinful flesh. He, he did everything. He became a curse for us and went beyond the veil. All of that story then I said to myself, Sister Bingo, that's the point. If I get caught up in the wooden cross and miss the power of the cross, mm, I, 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 I'm lost. Thank you, brother. I'm, I'm lost. I, I got to realize I need a relationship with him. I need a relationship with him because I need to know what makes him move. How do I move now? I hope I don't sound too right, but church is more than church to me. This building right here is representing something, the way we do, and the reason why there are apostles, the reason why there's leadership, the reason why, because God gave them for a reason, and that needs to be carried out so we can work on working together. So we can work on helping one another. So we can actually recreate what's going on in the heavenlies. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let the patterns of things be seen in our lives. So it's no longer idolatry, it's us. I always wanted to be Magic Johnson. I wore number 32. I tried to walk like him. I couldn't grow a gold tee, but I, but I tried to walk my past like him. I, I idolized magic. 
And part of idolizing is you want to behave like, and when we're really worshiping God, we want to behave like him. We take on his nature. He's given us the divine nature, and we, we walk like him. I looked at an old uh, sermon of me preaching when I was young, and my wife said, boy, you look like your daddy. You acting like your daddy. I said, ain't nothing I can do about that because his DNA is on the inside of me. You don't have to force walking with Jesus. Hallelujah. The invitational song for the day is, I believe the true report. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's the reports are out. There are reports that are out. But the hymn that said, I believe the true report. There are tabernacles that are out, but I believe the true tabernacle. I, I believe the true report. Hallelujah to the Lamb. While we all stand to our feet, I don't know if the, the Lord, if we can sing that song and respond to it. Hallelujah. I believe the truth. Hallelujah to the 